So, if you've just bought yourself a Runcam Wi-Fi Link 2, you may be wondering how to change the settings. Well, if so, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you three simple ways to change the settings on the Runcam Wi-Fi Link 2. So, the first one is probably the easiest one. All you're going to do is take an SD card and put it in the SD card reader slot on the air unit. You're then going to power up the device, give it a few seconds, and it's going to generate two config files that you can then read on a computer. So if you have a look at the SD card, you're going to see two files, gs.key, which you don't need to worry about, and the user configuration file, which you're going to open in a program like Notepad++. So at the top, you're going to see the channel. And as well as the channel, you're going to see what the megahertz value that equates to. So I'm on channel 64, and that relates to 5320 megahertz. Now, by default, it is on 161. And that is as that's the recommended one in USA or Europe. However, since I'm in China, I use a lower value like channel 64. You will have to be careful if you're flying with analog DJI and Walksnail pilots to make sure that you've got a channel where you're not going to be interfering with each other. So if we have a look here, here is where we set our transmit power. And these don't directly equate to milliwatt values. So 20 is going to equate to 40 milliwatts. That's what it is by default, but you're not going to get very far flying on 40 milliwatts. So you will have to change that to something higher. 25 equates to 100 milliwatts. 30 equates to 160 milliwatts. 35 equates to 250 milliwatts. 40 is 400 milliwatts. 45 is 500 milliwatts. 50 is 630 milliwatts. 55 is 700 milliwatts and 58 is going to be 800 milliwatts. Down here you're going to see the codec, you don't need to worry about that. Next is video size. Now by default I believe this is 720p by 120 frames per second, but I've adjusted this to 1080p 60 frames per second since I use a monitor in the field. Down here you've got the bit rate and that's in megabits per second, so by default it's set to 4096. You can set it higher, but bear in mind, if you do set it to a higher bit rate, you're going to need a stronger radio link. Down here, you've got records equals false. You can set this to true. And what that means is as soon as you plug the battery in, it's going to start recording to the onboard SD card. However, that feature is a little bit buggy. So don't rely on that if you're going to use that. Down here, you're going to see some image settings for the camera. You can adjust the hue, saturation, luminance, that kind of thing. Here is going to be the OSD. It supports Mavlink or MSP DisplayPort. By default, that is MSP DisplayPort, and that's going to work in Betaflight and iNav. And down here, you can actually have it send audio since there is a microphone on board, but bear in mind that will increase latency since you are sending an audio stream as well as a video stream. So that is probably the easiest way to do it. You don't need any special software. However, it's not very convenient because I don't know about you, but I don't lug around a laptop into the field. So for the second method, all we're gonna do is take the included LAN cable. We're gonna plug it into the air unit here, making sure to get it the right way around. And then we're going to plug this into the LAN port on our computer. So all you need to do is you're gonna find the ethernet port. It's gonna be this Realtek Gaming 2.5, this unidentified network in your network connections. You're gonna right click, go to properties, and you're gonna to wanna to scroll down until you find the IP version four. Click on properties, and you're gonna to have to click use the following IP address and set it to 192 16812. And after you've done that, you're going to want to open the Open IPC multi platform configurator, which I will put a link down to in the description. And you're going to hit connect. These settings by default should be correct, so you just hit connect. 
and it's going to take a second to read your camera. Okay, when it says populated firmware, you know that it's connected. Uh, to set the channel, you're going to go to this WFB, this Wi-Fi broadcast. So here you've got the channels, just like you had in the notepad. You've got the channel numerical value, and you've got the megahertz value. And here is actually where you're going to see that power level. So as I said, it's set to 20 by default, and you can just use this to increase it like that. Uh, once you've changed all the settings, once you've found a channel you're happy with and a power value you're happy with, you're just going to hit save and restart WFB. And then if you want to change the camera settings, such as your bit rate, you're just going to click on camera. Here you can change the resolution. Here you can change the frames per second. And here you can change the bit rate. As soon as you've done that, you're just going to click save and restart Majestic. So of course, again, you're going to need a laptop to do this. So if you're not lugging a laptop into the field, this might be a little bit inconvenient. So next, I'm going to show you how you can change the settings directly on the air unit in the field without using a laptop. So this is probably the easiest way to do it in the field. So all you need to do is take both of your sticks and pull them down and to the center and then the VTX menu is going to appear and you can navigate using this stick here. So you're going to have all your camera settings there such as your video, you can change your resolution, your frames per second. We'll go back to the VTX menu. So you can see here I'm just going down to select and I'm going right to confirm. So there you've got there is our TX power value there so it's set to 20 at the moment. You've got your bandwidth now that is um, 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz and unfortunately the Runcam Wi-Fi link does not support 40 so you're gonna have to stay at 20. You're gonna see your channel there so we can change our channel up and down just like that. And of course, when we've done it, when we've say when we've changed everything, we're going to hit save. And then after that, you're going to go back to the VTX menu and you're going to hit reboot. So as soon as you do that, obviously you're going to lose picture and you're going to have to wait for it to reboot. So there we have it. Three methods to change the settings on the Runcam Wi-Fi Link 2. If you did find the video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as I'm going to be doing more OpenIPC videos in the future. Thanks for watching.